Hello everybody, my name is uh, John Whitehead. I'm one of the members of Type 1 Together and I thought I would do a uh, fairly quick review on the new Ipso pump which has been available in Canada for just over a month now. I started it, it was uh, just after it came out, I was the second person onboarded in Canada. So I've got uh, almost the uh, most amount of experience of anybody uh, with the pump. The uh, my changeover has gone from the Tandem uh, X2 pump to the uh, new Ipso pump using the CAM APS FX algorithm on your Android phone. That's a big part of this pump. Now, the size difference between the pumps, you have the Tandem pump and pull this out of my pocket, the Ipso pump. So the Ipso pump is a little bit smaller. It's a little bit thinner this way. Fits into your fits into your coin purse, uh, coin pocket purse, uh, very easily. Uh, or you can use some of the carrying cases. Now, like anything, carrying cases, the Tandem 360 one definitely worked better for me. It has this little hook right in there that would click onto a belt while the Ipso pump 361 has no clip there so therefore it slides off sometimes so I've gone if I don't carry it in my pocket I've gone with this type of carrying case fits a lot better for me and this buckle holds on solid so I'm glad I made that purchase but carrying cases really aren't what you hear to hear about. The pumps themselves, I was very happy with my tandem pump for five plus years. A great pump, uh, was able to keep my uh, in range around 90% throughout the whole time using the pump. I have nothing negative really to say about the pump other than the fact that it's taking your preset basal rates and trying to adjust from there. While the Ipso pump doesn't do that, it adjusts your basal rates fully. So it's giving you no insulin sometimes, giving you insulin based on whatever your Dexcom readings and your IOB. It has been really life-changing for me. I've gone from using about 34 units a day on tandem down now to uh, 26 units approximately, 25.6 over the month period. That's a 20% drop. That's a fairly big drop in insulin use that was not needed. So therefore, I had to compensate for that somehow, uh, mainly at work. No matter what I did with the tandem pump, I was having lows constantly. I'm a server. I walk quite a bit. So... No matter if I tried using the exercise mode an hour before, the restaurant business is very uh, unpredictable. So you can be extremely busy, then quiet, then busy again, vice versa. Like everything, everything changes on a dime. The Ipso pump has really kept up to most of that. Do I have lows still? Yes, but they're very easy to correct and without very much to correct them with. And when I correct them, I don't seem to rebound the way I did with the tandem. Now, everyone's going to find a pump that works for them. Uh, for me so far in the month's time, the Ipso pump is really working extremely well for me. Now, the pump itself, pretty basic. Let's see how we can see this. You have a very basic screen. Everything is icon based, so no words onto it. This is all things that can help somebody if they have some learning uh, issues, uh, have problems with different languages. Being taught on this is very easy because it's you're not you're not having to use the English language. So it's a great pump for that aspect of it. But the pump itself, I don't touch. I change my sight 
change my cartridge, and then the pump goes away for the three days. Don't tell them, but I go four days. Uh, it's just one of those things that each of us has to find what works for us. And so far, like I said, for me, it's this pump is all what I want. Everything is on your phone. You get to see your number. You get to see you're in auto mode. You have your home screen, the food bolus screen, the blood drop to calibrate your sensor if needed. Information in the top right hand corner there, you hit that information and so much comes up. Active insulin, how much you've got in your reservoir, what your battery is at, when your last bolus was, when, it, when the pump connected last, when your data came in from the sensor, your target glucose, how much insulin you use today, how much you use yesterday, what your average glucose is today compared to yesterday. So all of that information is easy to get to from there, or you go to the bars at the top. And again, so much comes in here. Add a meal. That's something you should definitely be looking at when you first get the pump, because every hypo treatment you do, you should add to the pump so the pump learns from you and learns quicker. So it doesn't think that the algorithm is working uh, properly for you. It can now change if you've had to give yourself uh, 10 carbs to bring yourself back up. It's not going to give you the insulin for it, but it knows that you've done it. So the algorithm can be more aggressive. If you have a slowly absorbed meal, it's a good idea only to use that if you're having things like the pizza, pasta, where you may give yourself half of your insulin now, and then the other half, you hit under slowly absorbed meal with the amount of carbs. So we'll get back out of this one. So that was the add a meal. All your normal alerts, your alerts are basically the same as with the Dexcom. But with the Dexcom, you're only able to go back on your screen 24 hours. With this one, you can go back as far as you want. I forget what the date is onto it, but it stores so much data on here and all easy to get to and easy to find, easy to see. So we'll spread this out again. This spread, like you can spread out your time on your actual pump data right there. So if you want to only know what's going on the last hour, you can do that three hours, six hours, whatever you like. You have your share feature. Share feature, you have different availabilities. You have the companion mode and you also have followers. Followers will get text messages for any alert that you receive. While the companion mode, that's really good for parents or caregivers. That will show everything that happens exactly like your pump, including your boluses and your basal rates and what's going on, but they are not able to actually give you insulin with it. So it shows exactly the same things. Now, you have your statistics. Day, week, month, last three months. So when I click last three months, it's giving me my average glucose, 6.7, time in target, 89%, because that also includes the first week where I had the pump and the numbers weren't quite the numbers that I would have liked as the algorithm learned me. If I go back and do the last month, 90%, that's what I'm looking for. That's what my target is, 90% or better. Average glucose, your total daily dose, uh, your bolus, your basal, auto mode, how long it's in use. Mine's 99% because you have your two hours uh, every 10 days with Dexcom where it has to uh, warm up. Auto mode interrupted four times, that's site changes and things like that. No sensor glucose four times. That's what it would be, would have lost connection for a very short period of time. 
sensor glucose availability, 99%. So there's all the information that you want to see is right there. You can generate the PDF reports for any medical people. There is the share feature that you'll be able to give to your medical team when they invite you to it to share all your information the same way you do with any pump. Again, active insulin, since you refilled your site, you will, since you inserted everything, your Dexcom, and when you calibrated information, the basic firmware, things like that, what your pump serial number is. You've got your settings. So you've got your weight that you want to put in there. Go back. Bolus calculator on there. With the bolus calculator, you've got your minimum glucose for a calculation. I've got mine set low because if I'm doing a correction and I know it's going to hit me quick, I want that insulin to start going into me right away. Your glucose target. Now you can set this wider than any other pump. If I want at 12 o'clock to 7 a.m., I've got it set right now for 5.5. I tried to set it for four, and now it's giving me what you can set to. You can set your target anywhere from 4.4 .4 to 11, based on your time of day. So again, if you're in a, a job where you may want your target to be higher, you can change that target range for yourself in there. Let's go cancel that. It's still set back because I didn't confirm anything. Still set at 5.5. That wide variation, no other pump out there does that other than do-it-yourself looping. Do-it-yourself looping is beyond a lot of people's ability and only works with very limited uh, pumps. Your correction factor on here. So my correction factor is 3. Your insulin to carb ratio, your duration of insulin action, you can set that again quite wide depending on what you find works for you. A lot of pumps, again, like the Tandem, it's set for five hours. If you find in the last hour you're not going down from the insulin, then that five hours really isn't the right thing for you. Mine, I have set a four and a half because I find that generally is what seems to be what works for me. And diabetes is always what works for you. Pumps are individual choices, whether you use one or not, even though now the recommendation is to always use insulin, um, an aid pump, which is an automated insulin delivery pump, which all pumps now are aid pumps in Canada. You've got the Medtronic pumps, you've got Tandem, you've got Omnipod 5 now just became available, and now you have the Ipso pump. The Ipso pump, again, though, is the only one using your phone to deliver the bolus. Bolus is fork and knife. You click that, it takes a second for it to connect to your pump. Now you can add a meal. You can pick the preset ones. So if I had a large meal, I have it preset at 75. Now, let's say it was actually 80 that I'm going to be eating. I can adjust that slightly by just using the slider. And the slider brings it to there. Or you can manually slide to whatever number you wanted to. And again, you can hit the carbs and manually enter it. So you've got three different ways to do the same function. Now, why do they do that? Probably because each one of us does things differently to get the same result, or hopefully get the same result. So we can cancel that. So the insulin that shows you how to do your bolus, all your settings, everything is on the pump. You have those same settings backed up 
onto your pump itself in case your phone ever breaks. If worst case scenario that happens, you can always, if you have an older phone around that the app works on, you can now switch over to that. Doesn't take very long at all to add it into your, your new uh, phone. Uh, it's also a backup. If you leave your phone at home, your pump is still going to be giving you what you've set it to deliver on your previous, on your previous uh, settings. So those are all safety backup features. But in the month plus that I've been using this, I've not touched my pump other than to do my site changes, which I absolutely love. It's very freeing not having to play around, touch my pump, uh, look at my pump. Everything shows right here. And your statistics too, when you look at things, let's go back to the statistics. Statistics, look at my day. It gives you what your time and target is for so far today. So far today, I'm doing pretty good, I'm at 100. Let's see if I can keep it up for the rest of the day. But if you had a couple of lows or a high, let's say it was at 78%. That's for right now. You can still increase that quite a bit by maintaining your rest of your day. I like that compared to the Tandem app. It's the, t I mean, pardon me, to the uh, Dexcom app. The Dexcom app won't give you your reading for today until later on in the evening. And then you can change it slightly based on the rest of the, the day, but it won't give you what your readings are percentage wise until later on. Your, uh, it gives you your hypo durations. So again, it's hard to see on here, but I'm trying to get it so that hopefully this shows up for you guys. It's all right there. Everything you need is here. So far for me, this pump has been life-changing at work. I was constantly going low, drinking a lot of Coke to try to get it back up. That then changed when I went to this because my basal rates are completely set by the pump. Is it perfect? No, no such thing as a perfect pump. Never will be, I don't believe. And again, each one of us reacts differently. Uh, we all we all are different people for a reason. And that's why there's many pumps out there. I hope you find what pump is the best for you. And I hope this gives you just a little bit of insight as to what this pump has done for me and how it has really made my life better. Thanks, everybody, and uh, make it a great day.